plant tissue analysis. Hopefully you're using this on your farm to supplement your data, supplement your information that you have about fertility. It's incredibly important. It's not meant to take the place of a soil test, but what it is meant to do is give you an idea throughout the season how your plants are doing on any individual day in terms of overall plant nutrients. So we want to talk a little about how you take plant tissue analysis and turn that into a recommendation for fertility for your farm. Well, I've always said the plant tissue analysis is the report card for the farmer. Yep, you can know what's in your soil and you can apply fertility to your soil and that is great. That's a, the right place to start. But really, you have to get that fertilizer or that plant food into the plant to be successful. And by taking plant tissue analysis, you can see, all right, what is actually getting into our plant? Now, plant tissue analysis can be a little bit deceiving. It's kind of like, well, you could get a B for your math grade and you know, just barely be getting by and really not understanding the concepts. And you may have a B today, but it may be on the way down. Or you could have a B because you know you stumbled once uh, but your grade is really on the way up. So it, it's, it can be a little bit deceiving. What I mean is this, let's say that you have a, a tissue test that comes back and you say, man, I am short in sulfur. And if immediately you think, wow, my tissue test says I'm short in sulfur, I'm gonna go out and apply sulfur and I'm gonna do great. You know what? There may be plenty of sulfur in your soil. It may just not have rained for a while. And once you get some moisture, that sulfur comes available and moves into the plant and everything's fine and it didn't cost you a penny just to wait for a few days to get the or rain. Or not just rain, it could just be, oh, my roots are really small, but as soon as my roots get a little bigger, they're gonna hit this great big reservoir of sulfur that I've got in the soil. So it, that's the thing that we don't know with the plant tissue test, and we have a much better idea, much better understanding with the soil test. How much is really in the soil that we can use throughout the season? Nevertheless, what we do suggest you do in terms of plant tissue analysis is take samples each and every week throughout the growing season for at least eight to 12 weeks. You do it early in the grass crops, you do it just a little bit later in the broadleaf crops, like maybe starting a month after planting or something with soybeans, for example. But anyway, what you can do then is take these plant tissue analysis results and take a look at them and say, all right, now what do I need to address on my farm? So for example, if we're short on zinc and we were short in the soil test, we put just a little bit on, but we said, oh, well, that's maybe not quite enough. And then we see, uh-oh, I've got four weeks in a row where I've been short on zinc in my plant tissue analysis. Now what should I do with that? How do I turn that into a recommendation? You've been short on zinc all along, so what would we do? Well, what I would do is try and get some zinc out there. Now you have to think a little bit about what nutrient you're dealing with here. Zinc does not move around very much in the soil. So doing a foliar application, that may be a good way to try and get some zinc out for your crop. I'd recommend something that's chelated so you don't get it tied up and so you try to get it into that plant to, so it can be effective for you. Now you may say, well, hold on. I was going to side dress. So what, what about just putting zinc in my side dress? You certainly can do it that way. But again, zinc doesn't move around very much. So it's gonna take a little time before your root system is gonna find that zinc and, and fully explore through that zone where the zinc is at. For my money, I'd go ahead and do that foliar feed. Now you also may be thinking, well, hold on here. I've been short all along. I need to actually get some pounds out here in my ground, and I would agree with you on that. If it was my ground, I would be thinking, you know what, this fall, I'm gonna be getting some zinc out there. Yeah, or but, next spring, before yeah. my crop is planted, I'm gonna be getting yeah, some zinc out there Yeah, but before we get to what are we gonna do next year with this, we need to talk about what are we gonna do this year with this. And one of the most important things to understand is, hey, if we've shown a soil test is low or deficient, we've had four tissue tests in a row that have been low or deficient, we've probably already given up some yield, all right? So we can't recover lost yield. What we can do is hopefully stop any future yield loss by getting more zinc out there today. We've never had the greatest consistent success with foliar feeding, in part because you can only get a little bit in terms of nutrients into the plant. So if you want to foliar feed six more times with low rates of zinc, you'll probably have better results well, than just going out okay, there one hold, time. Hold on, now here's the other side of that is, you're going out after you know you had a problem. That's right. For, for many guys, they don't even know they've got a problem. They've right. already lost the yield. Now they yep. go out, they throw the zinc on, and it looks great. Oh, the crop responds. Everything looks just fine. Yep. But in the meantime, well, 
I already gave up 10 bushel, 20 bushel, whatever. So now instead of 200 bushel corn, I get 180 and I say, man, I'm disappointed with that foliar or zinc. You know what? Maybe you only would have got 160 if you wouldn't have addressed the zinc out there. Well, I don't know. But here, here's the whole thing. What we want you to do when you look at these plant tissue tests and you see, oh, I've got a problem, is start addressing it by trying some things. So nobody has the exact answer. And that's the, probably the main thing that we wanted to stress to you here. There is no set formula for, oh, I'm deficient in zinc with this tissue test. I need to put on... 0.2 pounds and that will correct that issue. Nobody knows that exactly. So you need to try some things on your farm, try it in some strips, document it, figure it out, and then use that in the future. Let's talk now about next year. That's the main thing we use plant tissue analysis for, is to say, all right, our soil test said we were good, but we were short eight out of 12 times in terms of zinc when we did tissue tests. Well, that tells me that, our, yes, our soil test might have said, okay, but you know what? Maybe that soil test information isn't giving me all the information I need. I'm gonna try bumping that zinc rate, whether that's through a broadcast application in the fall or in the spring, whether that's through banding some more next spring when I'm planting, I'm just going to do something to try to get my zinc levels higher. Well, I think it's interesting when you talk to the highest yielding farm farmers around the country in whatever crop. I don't care if it's a vegetable crop or, or wheat or soybeans or corn or whatever. When you talk to the highest yielding producers, they say, you know what, good is not good enough. So yep, my soil test says I'm good in potassium, but I know I'm gonna raise a phenomenal alfalfa crop and it needs so much more potassium than just a good level. I have to get to an excellent level on potassium if I want to be successful in my field. Whereas the guy that says, ah, I'm raising two ton of hay per year, a good level of potassium is plenty for me. So it's going to vary depending on where you're at. And you just have to understand your farm operation, what your goals are and, and what your historic production has been. So you have to be realistic in, you know what, I'm going to get two ton of hay or I'm going to get 10 ton of hay. That's a whole different deal when you're looking at a soil test. And either way, we suggest that you do some plant tissue analysis throughout the year. I'd rather have you take fewer spots and do it more often than take a whole bunch of spots just one time. We really want to track how this progresses each week throughout the growing season, again, for at least 8 to 12 weeks. And it's not hard work. It only takes a few minutes to pull a plant tissue test, but it could change your economic future on your farm and the way you manage your soil. So it could be great for the environment and your pocketbook just to take a few minutes a week to do this. Well, another thing that could be great for your pocketbook is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll help you control this tough weed coming up later in the show.